Hey everybody, I am joined by Tom Peterson from NVIDIA and we're going to be talking about the GPU rendering pipeline today. So this is pretty cool stuff, talking about basically how does it work, Yeah. how does it interact with the game engine. So there's all this different stuff in games, obviously. Geometry, yep. shaders, yep. What's, where do we start when I'm drawing a frame to the screen? Ah, it's a good question. So the way I, I think about it is um, the pipeline is all about um, creating a three-dimensional model and then translating from three dimensions to two dimensions, which is what you're going to see on your screen. So to begin with, uh, obviously you first have to create this three-dimensional model, independent of where you're looking at it, and that's called geometry, right? right. And uh, you basically assemble geometry geometry from models. Each model has its own coordinate system, and you do something called tra uh, translation, rotation, and scaling as you kind of position these vertices in a three-dimensional world. Right, so you really haven't started thinking about how do I view this thing. You're just trying to create the, the entire geometry of everything that's in the scene, okay? Now, after you've done that, you apply uh, different geometric or vertex-oriented transforms. So you're going to do things like per-vertex lighting. And again, what you're doing is making that uh, world more elaborate and more descriptive of the model you're, you're trying to describe. But now you've created this world, you have to figure out how to get it onto the screen. And that's done using something called projection. All of this is still happening in the geometry pipeline, but projection is the very last stage of vertices, where we're sort of taking a camera and virtually pointing it at a position in the world, and then dealing with things like perspective. And again, all we're doing is math, translating the geometry effectively to a, a different coordinate space that is uh, from the screen's perspective. Okay, so now once you do that, you do things called clipping, which is gonna pretty much scissor out the geometry that you really wanna render. And the last stage is converting this geometry now to pixels. Okay, so the process of pixelizing, or rasterizing is what we call it, is effectively imagine that you're gonna sample across pixels on your screen now. And there's another lookup that happens where you're saying, okay, I wanna go after the first pixel on the upper left, I'm gonna project into my little um, now clipped geometry and figure out which primitives or triangles or lines or dots are in uh, affecting that pixel. So by, by looking at which triangles are affecting a pixel, you can actually run a shader program. And now the shader program is tied to the geometry effectively that's uh, modifying that pixel. Okay, so think about it as uh, summarizing. You kinda create this three-dimensional world um, you apply effects like colorization and lighting at the, at the global level. Then you project it to your screen, but you're still in a geometric pipeline. And then you're going to kind of convert it to pixels. And while you're converting it to pixels, you're going to apply elaborate effects and things like shadows and complex textures and, and just beautifulization. That's all happening in a pixel shader. And at the end of the day... Beautifulization, a technical Yeah, term. beautifulization. <laughs> um, but at the end of the day, it's, it's all about um, that transformation from three-dimensional geometry in the geometry pipeline pipeline, and then in the pixel shader pipeline, converting it to individual dots. What do you think? I, I think that's pretty good. So let's let's zoom out. What's okay. a what's a canonical view of the GPU hardware as it pertains to this process? Oh, you know what's interesting is um, GPUs have become very very uh, programmable. And as a matter of fact, the entire geometry pipeline now, almost until you get to the very end, is all done in uh, programs that are called shader programs. They're actually called you know different types of shader programs as you follow the conversion from that three dimensional uh, model into the world and then doing different types of transforms like tessellation um, and then you can come into something called a geometry shader to do different deformations but at the end of the day what we're really doing is just sort of cycling through the same SM on on the hardware right. and it's a, it's driven by different programs that are created by the game developers. Once you get to the bottom of the geometry pipeline, that's there's some fixed function hardware that's doing things like, uh, again, the projection transform and clipping and all kinds of other good stuff. And now at the end of that, you're kind of getting uh, uh, an array that you can index and raster into. So that's the, that's the kind of uh, the way I view the canonical form. 
Very cool. That's very different, by the way, from where it used to be, which was, you know, every transform had fixed functions. Right. You know, initially it was all just hardware. A lot of it was done on the CPU, and then, um, you know, the idea of a vertex uh, processor or a geometry processor kind of emerged, but it was fixed function again. And then that over time, somebody said, you know, if if we could have a program do that, wouldn't that be cool? You know, it wouldn't have to. Everything wouldn't have to be so flat. We could have bumpy, and you know, so that became shader programs, vertex shaders, and eventually somebody figured out you could do the same thing with a pixel shader. So our, our pipeline has become far more programmable over the years, and effects have, uh, have matured as programmability has uh, enabled it. Right. Uh, could you provide some examples of different items or elements of a game that would be stored in memory, the GPU memory specifically? Okay. Um, so one example of a game, if you remember I was talking about um, textures that can be applied on right. pixels. Um, the texture is actually a, a giant, it's like a JPEG, a giant image, and it literally looks like a JPEG. It's a two-dimensional array, and it's stored as a flat picture in memory. And when you're trying to figure out what color to draw a pixel, you kind of say, okay, my pixel's here, and I know the texture is kind of covering this geometry, so you can calculate the specific location in the texture, and therefore the memory, to read the color that's going to go on that pixel. So you can kind of think about um, the real challenge of this pipeline is you, do, you want it all to flow. So you don't really calculate intermediate data structures and store them in memory. You want the whole thing to just sort of be a vertex comes in, it gets transformed, and then a vertex go out, it gets transformed. And this whole thing is designed to basically be one in, one out across vastly parallel structures. All right, so that's a quick recap <laughs> of the pipeline. Of course, a lot more to it. Links in the description below for some of our articles on this stuff. We wrote about the Pascal GB100 architecture, oh, cool. which is pretty interesting. And uh, we'll have another video, actually, you and I, about the overclocking with Pascal. Oh, yeah, that's exciting. So do check back for that. Thank you for watching. I'll see you all next time. See ya.